So, I decided to do something that's never been done before. Yep, that's right. I recreated Minecraft. Now, you may be thinking, why in the world would you attempt such a feat? It's impossible. And I would agree with you. In fact, this was a huge headache. In all seriousness, why would I recreate something that a million other people have already recreated? Well, I felt like everyone who had recreated Minecraft just didn't do it justice. It's not that their clones were inferior than mine, but they really are, just kidding. But they didn't do some of the more gameplay feeling stuff. What I mean by that is they implemented a lot of the basic mechanics and then stopped. They didn't add menus, they didn't add debug statistics, they didn't add saving and loading screens, all that type of stuff. So. I decided I would implement all the parts of Minecraft, you know, except all the hard stuff. So here's how my journey went. The first piece of any good Minecraft clone puzzle is rendering a square. This ended up taking me a lot longer than I thought it would have taken, but eventually I got a square up on the screen. And since this is a Minecraft clone, I decided to make it all Minecraft-like and added a grass block texture. Unfortunately, I lost all the footage for this stream, so here's the end result. Next, I need to be able to place any old block texture in the game. This can be done a huge number of ways, but I decided to just do the stupidest, simplest method out there, which was to patch all the textures together into one big, giant image. It ended up looking like this. This part wasn't that difficult, but I don't like making my life easy, so I had to make it more difficult. I wanted it to be super easy to add new blocks into the game in the future, so I came up with the most clever block creation scheme ever. I call it YAML. Actually, I didn't really come up with this. Basically, you can just write up a description of the block, put whichever textures you want to use in here, add a few other details, and bada bing bada boom, you got your new block. We've got squares and textures, so we basically have Minecraft, right? Wrong. Minecraft needs a 3D player controller. So. I went ahead and wrote some super clever code that I stole directly from a website, and next thing you know, I've got a 3D player controller. Of course, it never works right the first time. Anyways, I fixed that up and thought to myself, squares are great, but what if we had cubes? Cubes are pretty simple in theory. They consist of eight vertices, which are just the different corners of the cube. I also have to attach some extra data so the program can figure out which texture to apply to which face, and once that's all figured out, well, you got a cube. This took me way longer than it should have because I was over-engineering the crap out of it. I eventually got there in the end, and I made this giant chunk of cubes. Now that we have cubes, we need to create chunks and call the interior faces. You see, if we just draw all the interior faces of the cubes, the GPU does a lot of unnecessary work and ends up lagging horribly. So we can just say, hey computer, if there's a block next to me, don't draw that side. And that's basically the process I take. Now, there are some gotchas. Like if you have a glass block, you clearly want to draw the side of the cube, but those are pretty easy to add in once we get this done. Now we can save some GPU work and we can go ahead and generate a bunch of chunks. Now let's just apply some simple X noise and now we have terrain. Now we're getting places. The next thing that would be nice to do is add chunk serialization and deserialization. This is basically the process of saving and loading a chunk. Since I coded this in C++ and stayed pretty close to the hardware, I can literally dump the raw binary straight to a file and then I just load that raw binary back in. Now we can save and load chunks. This is great, but I was running into some horrible lag issues and my program was using, you know, 30 gigabytes of RAM for a 12 chunk radius, so I had to fix that. Over the process of a couple weeks, I added some horribly over-engineered multi-threading and some janky vertex compression. I basically stole Hobson's idea of compressing chunk data into a couple bytes per block, which brought my RAM down to like four gigabytes, and then I added multi-threading to speed things up a bit. What's next on the list? Well, we need a way to handle entities. We need a method of storing several entities in our world and having a way to iterate over those entities that have some features we're looking for. For example, our physics wants to find all the entities that have box colliders. So it asks for those and it does some physics stuff. I used something called an entity component system for this and added a quick and dirty method to add entities like players to the game. With this in place, I could add physics. Physics is harder than it looks. Well, actually physics looks pretty hard, but I won't bore you with the details. 
I basically needed a way to stop the player from falling through chunks, and a way to raycast into the world to see what the player's looking at, so I eventually settled on a couple of methods I liked and was able to add some simple physics. Next up, font rendering and HUD stuff. Like I said before, I wanted to add in the ability to do menu stuff that a lot of people didn't add in their clones. So I had to code up a simple font render that basically loads a font on your PC, generates all the glyphs, puts them all in a texture so that I can display text to the user. Now I had some text alignment issues and everything, but I eventually got it all sorted out. Now I can make menus and buttons and all that good stuff. It's actually starting to feel like a game. At this point, my PC was just crying for some help. The way I initially coded this wasn't the best. Basically, I would calculate all the chunk stuff on the CPU, then copy and transfer that to the GPU once it was ready, and this was just horrible for performance and wasted a ton of RAM. I implemented this thing called OpenGL Asdo, which basically allows me to ask the GPU for some pinned memory. Once I get a hold of this memory, I can write to it as I please, and it will automatically initiate a DMA transfer when necessary. And now the GPU just has the data it needs. This sped things up and reduced my overall RAM usage to around one gigabyte for a 12 chunk radius. Not too shabby. Next, I decided to move on to more important things like hotbars, commands, and light. Coding up a hotbar was pretty quick and easy since I had all the other GUI stuff done, but I really wanted to add Minecraft lighting into the mix. Now, Minecraft lighting is actually a lot harder than I thought it would be, and I'm still trying to get it working really good. The basic idea is simple enough. In Minecraft, if you have an air block, it gets a light value from 0 to 15. It generates its light value based on the blocks around it. It takes the highest level around it and subtracts one from that. If it has direct access to the sky, then it automatically gets a light level of 7 to 15 depending on the time of day. I spent so long trying to get this work just right. It turns out I was using the wrong approach the whole time. I was trying to calculate all the lighting at the same time and store sky levels and light source levels in the same memory. Turns out this was a dumb idea because it leads to all sorts of weird problems trying to figure out what a light level should be. So instead, I found a great article that stored the sky levels separately from light source levels. This means that you can calculate all the sky levels once and as the day turns into night, you don't have to do any fancy updates, but can just take the sky level or the light source level for that specific air block. You just choose whichever one is higher. Around this time, I added in some cube maps, which made the game feel much more like Minecraft. After that, I added some proper command line parsing, which was pretty quick and painless. I basically just store a bunch of commands in the code, and if anybody ever types in something that matches one of those commands, I check if they passed in the proper arguments and stuff, and that's basically where I'm at. As you can see, you can join a world, play around in the world, place blocks, add blocks, place light sources, and all sorts of stuff. I plan on adding support for multicolored lights, crafting, inventory management, multiplayer support, 3D models, mobs, and some more stuff. If you're interested in seeing me code this in real time, you can check out my Twitch at twitch.tv slash gameswthgabe. And if you want to download this clone, you can download it in a link in the description. I will warn you, it will most likely crash, but it won't break your computer. At least I hope it won't. I might post another video on YouTube in the future with some updates if you want that. And if this video gets like 10,000 likes, I'll create some tutorials on how you can create your own Minecraft clone using whatever language you want. Just kidding, I'll be making those tutorials no matter what, but you can still like this video. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Bad, 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 bad.